This is the sixth grade math practice test for TN Ready. On this version, this is question number 11. A store has 40 bags of potato chips on the shelf. Of these bags, 30 are cheddar flavored, which either means they buy a whole bunch or nobody likes cheddar. What percentage of the bags of potato chips are not cheddar flavored? Now, anytime you see a question like this and it has that bold type in it, it means it's probably something that you need to pay attention to. They rarely ever do a bold word that doesn't mean something to them. Um, in this case, it's just trying to get you to answer the question. Your brain will automatically go to, okay, what percentage of the total stock is are cheddar flavored? But they're asking you which ones are not cheddar flavored. There's a couple ways that you could do this. The first way to do it, which I don't, I would think is less efficient, is to find the percentage of cheddar flavored and then go with uh, just take that away from 100% because whatever's left over, it's either cheddar flavored or it's not. So if you found out that cheddar flavored was, say, 4%, which is certainly not, then the leftover percentage would be 96%. So you're not cheddar flavored would be 96%. I'd rather figure out how many bags of chips are not cheddar flavored and just find percentage for that. So if I have 40 bags of chips... I take away the 30 cheddar ones, I'm left with 10. So this is the not cheddar flavor. I wonder how much it actually tastes like cheddar. I bet it just tastes like chemicals. Anyway, so to do a percentage, of course, you want to do your part that you're actually interested in over the whole. And since they're asking about percentage, this will actually give me a decimal answer. It, so you want to make sure that you convert that to find the percentage you want to multiply uh, by 100 because you'll just find the decimal here. So the part was 10, the whole is 40. This is a calculator section, that's what this thing indicates here. So you could do 10 divided by 40 in your calculator if you want, but it's 0 0.25. Now, that's not the correct answer, that's the decimal amount it's the decimal equivalent to the percentage, but it's not the percentage. The weird thing about these types of questions is that you'll often get questions that have answers that you have some room to move. And in this one, you technically have a little bit of room to move. The problem is it doesn't also include this because they ask you for something specific. Now they said, if they said decimal or whatever, you'd be able to add that, but you can't because they didn't specifically define it as a reasonable answer choice. So again, I have to multiply it by 100. And that gives me 25%. So I can put 25 here. I could put 25%. It doesn't actually matter. But the key issue is if they ask for it in percent, make sure you answer in percent. If they ask for decimal, ask, answer as a decimal. If they ask for fraction, answer as a fraction. If they don't tell you what they want, try to stick with what uh, system they already have in place. In this one, they don't really have anything, but down here, for instance, there's fractions, so you'll probably want to answer as a fraction. That's just a general rule of thumb. Again, sometimes I'll give you some leniency, but just be smart about how you do it. Make sure you answer the question as asked, and if they use a bold word, try to figure out why and then respond. Otherwise, if you did 30 divided by 40 and you put 75%, technically that shows that you understand how percentages work, but it doesn't show or that you can at least apply the procedure for percentage, but it doesn't show that you actually understand how to apply it to a real-life problem, so be smart about it.